Hello, and welcome to the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. Today, we are talking about plasticizers. This is a substance, typically a solvent, added to a synthetic resin to produce or promote plasticity and flexibility and to reduce brittleness. Basically, plasticizers are like the cartilage between your bones, uh, help your knee bend without friction. In plastic or rubber, this makes a more flexible, less hard product. Over the years, we have learned that these plasticizers can make their way into the human body, which is why you will see something like BPA-free on the side of your water bottle. BPA, or bisphenol A, is a chemical produced in large quantities for use primarily in the production of polycarbonate plastics and epoxy resins. The reason companies will state that their product is free of this is because of the possible health effects on the body, such as cancer, infertility, fetal development issues, heart disease, diabetes, and weight issues. Weight issues? Hey, have you gained some weight recently? What? <laughs> no, that's just a bunch of bisphenol A that's kind of built up in this region. <laughs> And recent research suggests that even small amounts, as approved by the FDA, can cause brain damage. This is a widespread concern we have essentially been aware of since 2003. The CDC found detectable levels of BPA in 93% of 2,517 urine samples of people ages 6 and older. If you're enjoying this episode, why not click that like button and subscribe? Let's talk more about this down in the comments. How does BPA get into the body? Well, pretty much from eating and drinking. And considering how important eating and drinking is to our survival, it sounds like that's a pretty big concern. BPAs can attach themselves to food through the packaging that the food comes in. Polycarbonate and plastic tableware, food storage containers, water bottles, baby bottles, toys, and even canned food can have these plasticizers. The biggest factor that can cause these plasticizers to get into the food is heat. So stop using plastic dishes to heat up your food in the microwave. And if heat is the biggest factor, then how do you warm up baby's milk in the bottle? I guess this means no more plastic baby bottles then. If you're thinking, well, I'll just breastfeed my baby. Okay, but BPAs can be found in breast milk too, which I guess that means stop heating up your breasts in the microwave. <laughs> so what happens to our brain? Ingesting plasticizers can impair important brain functions in humans. Even small amounts of BPAs and BPSs can disrupt the transmission of signals between nerve cells and the brain. Researchers are asking for immediate development of alternatives to plasticizers as the damage to our nervous system could be permanent. All right, so what can we do? Considering that BPAs are in a lot of products, how can we protect ourselves? chemicals can make their way into drinking water, so buy bottled water. But the bottles contain plasticizers that, when exposed to heat, gets released and making a container of toxic H2O. Not to mention, we end up with loads of plastic sitting in landfills and in our oceans. So I guess you could just not drink from the plastic bottle and pour it into a glass, right? Well, no, because you don't know if the bottles have been too hot at any point. So who knows if the plasticizers are in the water now? Okay, then let's go back to tap water. Maybe our water is free of chemicals and is healthy enough to consume. Great, it's just that there are over 8 million tons of plasticizers used each year, and most of them are added to polyvinyl chloride, commonly referred to as PVC. PVC? Why does that sound so familiar? That's because it's that white piping you see under your sink. So all your water travels through PVC piping and into your sink. But don't be afraid because these are not flexible pipes. Remember, earlier I stated that plasticizers are used to make things flexible. <laughs> so these pipes are PVC and most plasticizers are in PVC, but not the piping kind of PVC. They are in other things like shower curtains, the cover around cables and hoses and tubes. Oh, thank God. So let's get to the what can we do part already. According to the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, you can do the following. Don't microwave polycarbonate plastic food containers. Polycarbonate is strong and durable, but over time it may break down from overuse at high temperatures. Plastic containers have recycle codes on the bottom. Some, but not all, plastics that are marked with recycle codes 3 or 7 may be made with BPA. 
Reduce your use of canned foods. When possible, opt for glass, porcelain, or stainless steel containers, particularly for hot food or liquids. Use baby bottles that are BPA-free. Can we use filters to clean our water? Not really. <laughs> and many filters are made of plastic, so you're right back into the problem. The known method of removing BPAs from water is by adding TAMLs and hydrogen peroxide to the contaminated water, <laughs> with a success rate of 99% reduction in just 30 minutes. Awesome. Where do I get some uh, TAMLs and what are TAMLs? It's tetramidomycycle ligand, and well, <laughs> let's just say it's a solution that is done in a processing facility and waste management. There are some water filters out there that do not have plastic in them. So when you research for a good filter, just make sure it mentions BPA. There are several articles out there that review a few brands so you can buy with confidence. Another reason we have got to get back to all the natural foods that are fresh. I mean, this is getting insane. Technology should be making our lives better. But if we keep creating things like this, we are in for a really bad future. As always, thanks for watching. And what did you learn today? <laughs>